I just got off the phone with Kristen Bradford. I am gonna be in a beauty pageant. My pageants are the hardest pageant in the state of California. I feel like I'm on stilts. You have to be single, never married. This is yeah. insane. I need to take Michelle to a completely different level. The interview can make or break you. She's chosen a tough pageant, but if you want to be the best, you have to compete against the best. What do you think the likelihood of me winning is? 99.9%. .9%. <laughs> Today is the pageant day. Pageant mom Olivia has arrived. She's gonna do my hair and makeup, thank God. These are all of the products required to make me a beauty queen. What do you think is like the worst thing that could happen to me today, Olivia? Well, you could fall on your face. Oh, fuck. But the thing about, about that, that is you'd lose, but you get a lot of views from it. Ooh! Like I tried a beauty pageant, fail. Oh my god! Yeah, so either way you win. Honestly, that's genius. Look at this progress. Olivia is queen. Oh my god. Wow. I'm so happy. I'm never taking this makeup off. I am no, you, look like a <laughs> you look so crazy. <laughs> We're going to Miss Malibu, which is not in Malibu. No, it's in Beverly Hills. I don't know how to feel about today. I just don't want to fall on the heels. I don't want to trip on the dress. Pageant mom, how do you feel? I think you'll do fine. I think once you're there, you're a general and you can get push through, push through, yeah. I still don't know how I feel about this. Usually, like, by this point in the challenges that I do, I have a pretty good opinion on what I'm getting into. And this is the first time where I'm like, I don't know. All those other yeah. times, it was really for you. That's true. And you had control over yeah. the end result. This, I like, did. You don't have control over the end result. Not to freak you out. <laughs> did you practice last night walking for two hours? Are you touching your face? Don't it touch is. your hair. I spent a really long time teasing it. If you touch it, it'll fall. Did you remember the Vaseline to put on your teeth? You remembered your shoes, right? So the second we walk into the building, you have to be all smiles. Like, don't even look slightly bit nervous. You have to look so confident. You have to walk in. Energy can't fall. You gotta be up there all day. Okay. All right. Are you sure you brought your shoes? Yes. The pageant has three sections, interview, swimwear, and evening gown. The first part of the pageant is the solo interview portion where a panel of judges grills you for two minutes. We have no idea who the judges are, how many of them there will be, or what questions they're going to ask. It's nerve wracking because this is the part of the competition the majority of contestants mess up. First time I was like trying so hard to be the, the like party pageant girl and all the answers yeah. were so fake and so bad and they were like, no. You get better at it. And it's just like helps you be yourself. I learned how to speak my values and my truth. You don't realize like what it's preparing you for until you're already in the situation. I mean this panel interview prepares you for so much more than just a pageant. Yeah. It prepares you for life. This is happening. Just take a deep breath, just smile, have fun. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm like so nervous. I can do this. It's beginning. I'm nervous. Hi. Hello. Hello. My name is Michelle Carre and I'm contestant number 10. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> this is the first time you're participating. This is my first time being in a pageant and thank you so much for letting my crew be in here to document the process. <laughs> I do a YouTube channel where I take on extreme challenges and I really wanted to try a pageant because it's something that I feel like is misrepresented in the media a lot and I wanted to check it out for myself and see what it's all about. It says here that your career ambition is to be the first Indian American superhero on TV. Can yes. you explain that a little bit? Absolutely. So I um, have done a lot of stunt work on my YouTube channel. I've worked with the Marvel stunt team. I've trained with a bunch of different superhero stunt doubles and throughout that like my ultimate goal is to be the first Indian American superhero on television and that's because it's never happened before and I feel like it's an entire portion of the world that isn't represented and growing up I never saw myself on television or on Disney Channel or anything like that and I want to show other young women that they can do that. That's awesome. That's really Thank you. You're a professional cyclist. Yes. Being it, what is your thoughts and your perception now of Lance Armstrong after <clears throat> everything's come out? What did they ask her? Lance Armstrong, Lord. <laughs> he is uh, something else. You know, I, I think like what Lance did is obviously very wrong. You shouldn't do drugs. Um, but, um, you know, I think what disappointed me the most about Lance Armstrong was that it took away from the spotlight of 
awesome female cyclists. Um, and I think there are many amazing female cyclists like Mariana Voss, um, Pauline Prevost, who have done amazing things for the sport, and they don't have the same spotlight. And that's why I love doing cycling too, because I wanted to show that women can be strong, women can do really cool things. And that's also why I love like bringing it to social media as well, on my YouTube channel and stuff. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for being honest about Lance too. Oh Instead yeah. Of playing that politically, politically you correct. just yeah. said what was in your heart. Love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was really nice to meet you guys. Now we're headed to the next location for the rest of the pageant. I think it went well. Olivia heard it. Well, Olivia, what do you think? It, I think you did a really good job. Genuinely. The question that I thought was gonna throw me was when they asked about Lance Armstrong. I have such a strong opinion on Lance Armstrong. Yeah. So it was I like I was just talking before I was even thinking. Yeah, but what you said was fine. I think I just said don't do drugs, and then I was like, what the f did I just I did, say? I don't think you said. I, I did say that. You shouldn't do drugs. It's crazy to me how I felt more welcomed in a room of judges than I do in traditional Hollywood probably every day. You expect them to like literally judge you and like, mm -hmm. I don't think they went easy on me at all. No. I thought the questions they asked were comprehensive for sure. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like that, but like they were respectful. I was really pleasantly surprised. When I asked her, you know, on her sheet, it said that she wanted to be a superhero and I thought that was gonna be a very lighthearted commentary she was gonna give back, but she brought it to something that was really essential to her experience and her heritage. Yeah, I think she did an overall great job answering all the questions. And the one thing after answering the question, she elaborated a little bit more and went a little bit deeper. The one constructive feedback would be to relax with the arm a little bit. It was a little distracting. Mm -hmm. She was absolutely beautiful. She came in the room and like had an aura and like an energy about her that just like you wanted to listen to everything that she said. The kind of contestant that you just want to keep asking questions too. When the buzzer goes off and she has to leave, you're disappointed because there are so many great things that she's accomplished. I feel like we need more women like that. I think she'd be a great Miss Malibu. Coming out of the interview, I was feeling awesome. I was like, man, okay, I feel like I rocked that. Now we have the evening of excitement, anticipation as we crown the new Miss Malibu and Miss Beverly Hills title holders. I still don't know why I'm about to wear a swimsuit for a panel of judges. I don't know why I care. It's people's opinions of you. You're gonna do great. I'm relinquishing all control. Okay, bye. I love you. It's our opening number dress. And we go out for the first section of the pageant in my first dress. And I tripped. And it's like, I have literally worked so hard for this 10 seconds on a runway. And of course I trip in my heels. It just kind of shattered me a little bit on the inside. I got backstage and I was like, damn it. And then the next event is a fucking swimsuit. I'm literally having to follow that up by going out practically naked in these goddamn heels down this runway. Here we have Miss Contestant number 10, Michelle Carre. Michelle is a 26-year-old graduate from Dartmouth College. She is the owner of a production company with over 1 million followers on social media and 40 million YouTube views. She also was a professional cyclist and won nationals after only two years of training. Miss Contestant number 10, Michelle Carre. I felt tense, I, I didn't feel like super great, but I tried to have fun, I really did. It was just a really weird feeling being out there in a swimsuit in front of judges. I was having fun in the swimsuit, feeling empowered when all of these people were cheering for me in the crowd, and when I looked on the runway at the judges judging me in a swimsuit. That was when it got really weird. And obviously I know what I signed up for, but it's strange to feel this weird push and pull between I feel uncomfortable and I feel really empowered. Now let's slow down the pace for a bit and begin our evening gown competition. Up next we have Miss Contestant number 10, Michelle. Miss contestant number 10, Michelle. In the evening gown, I was most nervous because it's a floor length gown, it's a really big dress, it was a lot to manage, and in the rehearsals, I wasn't doing that great. But I just took a deep breath, and I was like, I got this. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna look damn hot doing it. Because how many times do you get to walk down a runway 
in an evening gown. Not that many. And I walked and I felt really, really good about it. I felt like I totally rocked it. There were people cheering. It was really exciting. We're almost done to the on stage question. On stage question. And next we have Miss Number 10, Michelle. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> what has been one of your favorite extreme challenges that you've done for your YouTube channel? Oh my gosh, I have been really fortunate to take on a variety of extreme challenges on my YouTube channel, but I think my favorite one was getting to learn how to swing like Spider-Man from Spider-Man's actual stunt double. It was pretty amazing, and I think the best part of it all was I've never seen a female do that before, in the stunt world especially, yeah. and it was such an amazing challenge, but I felt so blessed to be surrounded by such supportive people to let me do that, so it was so cool. Wow, I'm gonna have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> I totally knocked the onstage question out of the park. I love talking about my YouTube channel, and it was really fun to get to talk about that on stage. We just finished everything, and now we're waiting to see the top five. Top five. <laughs> Political question. Here are your top five finalists for Miss Malibu and Miss Beverly Hills. Are you guys ready? All right, so. Our first top five finalist is Miss Contestant number four, Jacqueline. Woo! Our second top five finalist is Miss Contestant number 12, Savannah. Top five finalist is Miss Contestant number 10, Michelle. I couldn't believe that I made the top five and felt like, oh my God, could I actually win Miss Malibu? Okay, girls, this is your last chance to shine. Just a reminder, the judges will choose tonight's winners based on your overall performance as well as the answer to the final question. Should there be more restrictions on the current process of purchasing a gun? Absolutely. I think a gun escalates every situation, so we can't hand them out to everyone. While I respect the rights to Americans to own a gun, I think if we want to keep that right, we need to have better laws. I think we need to have restrictions so that people can keep what they want to keep. Thank you. Should adults that are illegally attempting to cross the U.S. border be separated from their child? While I do understand that national security is a huge problem for our country, no family should be separated. These are human beings. They are families. And while they're searching for a better life, they should be treated with the utmost respect and dignity. Thank you. Next, we have contestant number 10, Michelle. Hello. <laughs> How do we encourage more women to vote in the next election? Oh my goodness. Well, I think it starts with giving women a voice in everything. And just like Savannah was saying, paying them equally, giving them opportunities in spaces that are mainly male dominated. And when women feel equal to men, then they'll go to the polls because they know their voices will be heard. Yes, girl power. <laughs> I felt like the question they gave me for the top five was a little weird. I mean, it was about women voting, which I should be able to speak about, but I felt like the other contestants got opportunities to kind of interweave their own experiences into their answers, and I didn't really have that for mine. Who's ready to find out who won? <laughs> so for the title of Miss Malibu and Beverly Hills, our third runner-up is contestant number 10, Michelle. Miss Beverly Hills is contestant number 11, Samantha, which means Miss Malibu is contestant number 12, Savannah.
When I found out that I got third runner up, I mean, I was just really excited that I got top five at all, but I was also a little bit disappointed because I think the hardest part for me about this experience is thinking about how I totally killed the interview. And so what must have brought me down was the way I walk in heels. And that's not a great feeling. Cheers, Cheers. to fourth place and this being over. Beauty pageants are weird. I wanna know what y'all thought. Uh, we have a lot of thoughts. We just talked about Michelle falling. <laughs> Shut up, Which I actually thought was adorable. I think you saved yourself perfectly. It made the judges pay attention to you. So the fact that you kind of like made fun of yourself and like flounced away, like nothing happens, like <laughs> probably I made them like you. Because nobody gets the same question, that really ultimately changes the odds. If I had gotten the immigration question, I feel like I could have connected to that really personally because I am a daughter of immigrants. I felt wrong. I felt wrong being there. These girls were walking out in bikinis and especially when it would get like quiet, like the audience would stop clapping and like it would get quiet. It's just like deep in their eyes, you could kind of see, yeah. I would rather not be up here doing this right yeah. now. I am uncomfortable with all of these girls having to put on this mannequin-esque aura of perfection. And yeah. it's so unnatural to see someone walk out there like, I do charity and I do all these things. And it's, I'm sure those girls do that. I'm like, I'm not saying that I didn't believe any of them but it is cloaked in this like mask. What does standing for a social issue have anything to do with the way that you look in a bikini? This is a competition apparently to give people a platform and to give people a voice, but only attractive people can get that position. The diversity was amazing. I felt very supported backstage by everybody else, which was really cool. I think my issues are more so with just like the concept in general. Almost every single judge was like, I just wanted to keep talking to you. Yeah. That it quality that you and my mom were talking about, like what is it? And my mom kept saying, it's something that just you can't stop. You can't help mm -hmm. but to like engage in conversation with that person. Yeah. And you did that in the interview, which was amazing. And I think that definitely carried you through. That gives me hope for beauty pageants, honestly, that your interview carried that much weight. I don't feel as negative as I did before about pageants, mm -hmm. I don't think, but still, like, I just don't think attractiveness and your views and social platform and impact need to mix at all. I don't know what pageants can do to change, but what I wish would have happened, and what truly I think would have been an empowering experience was, let's have a bunch of girls get together, talk about their fucking awesome accomplishments, oh. walk in a swimsuit because it's cool and awesome and they can, walk in an evening gown because it's gorgeous and beautiful and they should be able to do whatever they want, and like their friends come and cheer for them. Oh. And, and would people do that or go to that? I don't know, but like, that's kind of what I wish it was. Something that I think pisses me off the most about it, that you cannot enter this competition if you've been married before and if you've had a kid. It gives the idea that you can't be a successful role model if you're mm -hmm. also a mom. What I struggled with the most with the pageant was not the girls, wasn't even the judges. I couldn't do a walk correctly. I can't relax my arms. And like, I swear to God, I was trying. It made me feel not like less of a woman, but like I didn't know how to be feminine. I am actually really proud of myself for a lot of things that I learned, but I also wish I could have just walked down the runway like, fully being myself. There's like a limit on how much you can be yourself in a beauty pageant. Are beauty pageants sexist or are they empowering? Even now, I don't know how to answer that question because it's like, you don't have to enter, but also like the criteria it's judged on, that is a bit sexist in my opinion. Olivia, mm -hmm. do you think beauty pageants are sexist or empowering? Both. The contestants make it empowering, but within a sexist system. I don't have an answer. I really want to kind of like go the opposite opinion and say that it's empowering from a devil's advocate point of view, mostly because of the people I interacted with. I had a good time interacting with people. I did not like the system. I think that is the greatest part about this. It's unfortunate that it's being limited and restricted by a system that is very old fashioned. I think the system needs to be changed, but I think the women that put themselves through it mean well, have the greatest intentions, and I think they're amazing. I think it says something that a bunch of people who were anti-pageant are now confused on their opinion. It's been a week since the pageant. This has been unlike 
any other challenge I've ever done before, and I'm sure you guys can see that now. I think that beauty pageants have the incredible potential to be very, very empowering. I am still unsure about how I feel about the judging component of beauty pageants. I do think that some elements of pageants, depending on who is running them and how it is run, can absolutely be demeaning and sexist. I think that it is a bit weird to refer to some pageants as scholarship opportunities, considering how much money it costs to prepare for one. These are the actual hard costs I spent on the pageant. Yes, that is a real number. I think that's why beauty pageants are troubling to me, is only available to a certain type of girl who can afford to do it. I wish that beauty pageants were more inclusive to more economic groups and more body types. It's difficult to say that a swimsuit competition is about health and fitness when someone's health and fitness can be defined by way more than just the way that their body looks. I think if you want to enter a beauty pageant and feel sexy and awesome and grow as an individual and practice your public speaking, you should do it, no matter what you look like. More diverse women participating in these events will also reshape how mainstream America views beauty, and I think that would be really cool. But I also wanna say you don't have to look like a beauty queen on the outside to feel beautiful. This is one type of beauty. I might not fit that type of beauty perfectly, but it doesn't make me any less of a woman. You don't have to win a crown to feel like you're on top of the world. I learned a ton about myself and I do think I improved and grew as a person throughout this experience in a variety of ways that I wouldn't have otherwise. But also, I think I could have just had a little more self-confidence from the get-go, and so should you. If you enjoyed this video and somehow made it to the end, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below with your thoughts on beauty pageants, what you wanna see next, and as always, subscribe if you're new here because I always take on the most insane challenges. Have a great day, bye.